Hi everybody, in this video we're going to look at text and how we can modify a font to our liking and maybe possibly use it for a logo design. So I'm going to take the text tool that's right over here and I'm just going to click and when I click it just kind of lays down some filler, space, uh, filler text here. I'm just going to type a letter. I'm going to type a T, a capital T. And I'm just going to get my move tool and it just a little easier than maybe going to the numbers here. I'm just going to grab it from a corner, hover over a corner, hold shift. Act, let me see. Uh, hold shift, yes. And when I scale, it scales proportionally. Okay, and I'm going to just make this bigger. All right. <clears throat> so from here, I could choose um, a font. You can see you can actually hover over. If you maybe just set this aside, you can actually drop down and hover over. As long as it's selected, you can do this to just uh, find a font that works for you. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm finding something <clears throat> that is um, definitely uh, uh, symmetrical, because some of, some of these might not be symmetrical, like this one. Um, and maybe it's something that has just a few different um, things that has maybe some serifs here. So I kind of like this one. Okay. Um, right now it's still text. I can double click it and select it with the cursor here, the text tool, and change it if I like. However, if I take the move tool, and be sure you've watched my previous video on um, the two, uh, these two tools, uh, if I check this um, direct select arrow, I should be able to click on the anchor points around this letter, but notice there aren't any. And that's because it is text. So we need to convert this from text to uh, outlines, I call it, so or to a shape. So I'm going to make sure it's selected. I'm going to go to Type and Create Outlines. And depending on whether or not you've typed a word or a letter, you if you typed a word, you would have to do Create Outlines twice. Because the first time, what it does, it just breaks apart the letters so they can be moved separately and the second time would create the anchors that you're seeing here. So now that I have um, access to these anchors, I click off, I don't see them, I click on in the middle here, I can see them all. I can now click one of these anchors and move it. So uh, this will allow me to change this, um, this letter. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to hold, if I, if I move it down and then take this one and move it down, notice they might not be symmetrical. So I'm going to undo that. You can actually select multiple anchors at the same time. So I'm going to click this one and I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to click this one. And I'm going to pull both of them down. And if you hold shift while you pull them down, it actually keeps you straight and locked. So let's say I did that. All right. Now, I'm going to take this one and holding shift and this one, and maybe I think I'd like this to be like that. Um, so what if I wanted to make a point here? Well, notice there's no um, anchor for me to grab. Well, what's great about Illustrator is that I can hold down this tool, and there's this thing called a tear off, and I can tear this off, and I'm just going to place this closer. And where I want to also tear off is here. So this is the pen tool, and there's the tear off, and I'm going to tear this off. I like these tools nice and close to me, so I don't have to scroll all the way over here. So to, um, to use this pen tool, look what it can do. I'm selected on the, the shape, and if I hover over, if I hover over a, a blank path here, notice the plus sign appears on this pen, which means I can add an anchor. So if I did that and then I moved this anchor, it would do this. But I want it to just come up a little. I don't want it to stretch from this anchor to this anchor or this to this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add, and I can even go to the add anchor, I'm going to add another anchor here and another anchor here. And now I'm going to take the middle one, I'm going to click it first and move it up. And you can see because I've created these two anchors, that kind of blocks it from pulling from here. All right, so I'll just move this down a little bit. So how do you get these round curves? Right? What if I wanted um, something here to be rounded? Well, when you click on 
a path or click on one of these anchors, you might notice that there's these handles, and these can be pulled. These handles. Let me show that again. In fact, I'll just zoom in for you. So when I click on, in fact, let's just do it here because there are no handles. So how do you create handles? So here and here, I want this to be a rounded line. Well, one thing that they've added to Illustrator is this uh, little circle here. So when you hold shift, I'm going to click on both. You can see both of these circles appear. And when I drag them, they can actually do it for you. Now, that's fairly new. Uh, but what if you had to drag out your own curve? It's this tool right here. They call it the anchor point tool. And when you click on this tool, and I'm already selected on the path here, and I hold down, you can see I can drag and I'll I can drag out two anchors. Now maybe I don't want it dragged here. So I can take the same tool and tuck a handle in. So now I have this one curved and this one not. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to pull and then tuck this handle back in. And now I have something like that. I'm going to curve this one as well. In fact, maybe um, this one here. So I'm going to I'm going to pull this one. I'm looking at this here. I'm going to pull this in, and then I'm going to tuck this one back in. And I'm going to pull this one and tuck this one in. Now I know what you're saying. They might not look exactly alike, and that's okay, we can do something later. Um, but uh, I'm just going to do maybe two more things here. I do like the idea of moving these out a bit. So I'm going to pull this out and pull this out. And I'm going to zoom out. And now I have my new... I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to also... I want this. I'm going to tuck this in and pull it down. And now I have that. So I've created my own font here. So, what if I really needed this to be very symmetrical? I know it might look it, but it's just a little bit thicker here than here. There is something we can do. If I take a rectangle, and you can see these pink guides kind of help us. You can tell me the halfway point. I'm going to drag a big rectangle, and maybe I'll just fill this in with a color so you can see. All right? I'll cancel that. Okay. I'll take my arrow. I'm going to select both of these at the same time, and under Window and Pathfinder, you'll see this. So this enables me to either unite shapes, so now they're one piece, or this one minus, and it subtracts where they were overlapping. There's other things too, like uh, this one here. Um, where they intersect is what you keep, which would work also. And this one divides the shapes like this. <laughs> okay, but anyway, I'm going to do the minus. So now, I have half. And what I'll do is I'm going to copy and paste this. And we're going to go to Object, Transform, Flip. Uh, if there is one, reflect, it's called reflect in this program. And I'll just say OK. You can see it's vertical already, and say OK. And then I will move this over. So now I have a perfectly symmetrical um, letter. So uh, this is a good way to change a font and modify it and make it yours. Um, good luck and give it a try.